Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name is Michael and I want to show you in this video how you can paint Mozrog, Scragbad and Big Chomper. I'm going to show you step by step how you can easily achieve a great looking miniature in the Citadel style used by Kane's Workshop. I'll take you through painting Big Chomper, the Beast Nagarama and Mozrog himself including his tattoo. I'll list the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below if you want to paint your Mozrog how I paint mine. If you enjoy my content make sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below what you think. It really helps my videos get out to new people and grows the channel which I'd really appreciate. And make sure to follow me on Instagram where I post more tutorials and you can see what I'm working on for my next video. And you can also see what I'm working on in my own personal hobby. And if you want to share with me and others in the community what you're working on, you can post it in the r slash tabletop ready subreddit. I love seeing the amazing work you're all doing. Whenever I build a miniature, I always like to think about what pieces I want to keep separate to make the painting process easier. I decided to keep Big Chomper's tongue separate, as well as Mozrog himself. This is going to allow me to get to places I wouldn't be able to if they were attached. Mozrog and Big Chomper were both undercoated using the Wraithbone spray. This is really going to help get those bright colours down quickly. The inside of the mouth is going to be one of the more frustrating places to paint. This is why we left the tongue separate and it's why we're going to paint it first. Start by painting both the inside of the mouth and tongue using Cadian Flesh Tone. And whenever you're painting it's better to thin your paints first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. Make sure to keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted as you can create unwanted texture with your brush whilst the paint is drying. I also like to paint in multiple thin layers so we don't lose any detail on the miniatures. So make sure to let that layer dry and repeat the process until you have a nice solid colour which we can work from. I'm now going to use contrast for lupus pink first of all on the inside of the mouth to cover the Cadian flesh tone. I then thin down the volupus pink with an equal amount of Lamy medium and paint this on the tongue. I thin this down for the tongue as we don't want it to be as dark as the inside of the mouth. Make sure to let these areas dry before doing anything else. To finish the mouth, we're going to layer the tongue with Cadian Flesh Tone, making sure to leave it darker in the shallower detail. Then using Cadian Flesh Tone again, we're going to use it to highlight the inside of the mouth this time. And for the highlights on the tongue, use some Kids Left Flesh, thinking about what details we want to emphasise. Once you've finished painting the mouth, you can move on to painting the teeth and claws, which we're going to paint in the same way. For the teeth and claws, start with some Abaddon Black. Next, paint a chunky highlight using Eschen Grey to define the shape of the teeth. Before painting, a fine highlight using Dawnstone. You can finish the teeth by painting dots of white scar and some of the sharper points if you want to show off. Next up, I'll show you how to paint Big Chomper. Big Chomper is painted in a way that resembles a great white shark and really stands out against the traditional colours of other squigs you may have. Start by painting the skin using Corax White, making sure to get a solid colour. When you finish doing that, paint the grey area on the top half of the squig using Administratum Grey. If you're unsure on where to paint the grey, just look at the box or the Games Workshop website like I did. And where the grey meets the white of the skin, we want to make it look more interesting than just the straight edge. So take your time creating an interesting pattern, similar to how an edge would look if you ripped a piece of paper. You can go back in with Corax White as well to make sure you're happy with how it looks. Let's now work on the pinkish tone you see in the folds and recesses of the skin which is used to help give some definition. Create a glaze using Volupus Pink and Lamy Medium. We want to use a glaze because it's really easy to overpower white, so we want to build the colour up slowly. Using a glaze brush, I paint the glaze into all the folds of the skin, in the shallow detail, around the teeth, and then over the spikes on his back. I do this a second time on the areas I want to deepen the colour some more. If you're like me, and you're a messy painter, you can eaten up any areas of the skin using Corax White and Administratum Grey, and this will actually help soften the pink some more at the same time. Finally, finish the skin with a highlight using White Scar. I just want to take this moment to talk about highlighting, as it does come up a few times in this tutorial. When you're highlighting, you want to have as much control over the brush and paint as possible. First of all, I like to make sure I have a brush that has a really good pointed tip, and I'll use this exclusively for highlighting. 
I also find I don't tend to thin down my paint as much as we're not going to be painting multiple layers but still want a strong colour. And to prevent any thick blobby lines I like to remove some of the paint from the brush on some kitchen paper first which helps to stop this happening. You don't need to do a lot of highlighting on the squig skin as it can detract from the softer details. To paint the eye start with Mephiston Red then wash the eye with Norn Oil then paint some Everson Scarlet in the bottom corner of each eye and finish the eye by highlighting the bottom left with Kislev Flesh. Before we move on to getting the metallics painted I'm going to thin down some contrast Blood Angels Red and paint this around when the machinery comes out of the flesh. And once that's dried we can get started on painting all the metallic details. I want to paint all the metallics now because they're the next most prominent details on the miniature and we want these details to look as interesting as possible. We can do this by using different metallic colours like Lead Belcher, Retributor Armour, Balthasar Gold and Screaming Bell to give the impression different metals were used. After you've finished doing that, let's create some definition on these areas using some Norn Oil. When applying the wash, try not to saturate the details too much. You want to use enough to cover these areas comfortably and let that completely dry. Now apply another wash using Agrax Surf Shade, but this time just to the silver areas, making sure to let that fully dry as well. This is the time to get creative adding interest and character to the metals, by repainting some areas and applying even more washes. I decided to start with Lead Boucher just on the leg, liberate gold on the exhausts and reapply Balthasar Gold to the footplate. When you've done that, use Rikon Flesh Shade on the areas we painted liberate gold and then apply a second coat once it's dried to the lower half to create variation. You'll notice there are a lot of pistons and rods around the miniature so you'll want to pick these out with some Stormhouse Silver and then Cerevan Sapia can be used to add the look of fresh oil on the moving parts. And before adding the finishing touches to these metallic areas, go ahead and paint some highlights using Stormhouse Silver and all the different metals. Nylock Oxide can then be used to create some corrosion in some areas including the exhausts. And finally Agrax Earth Shade mixed with an equal amount of Lamy Medium can be used wherever you want some more oil and grime build up. With the metals done, I want to show you how to paint all the materials before we work on the skin of Mozarog. There's a lot of different materials on this miniature and you can easily get overwhelmed by them but they're mainly different tones of brown so you can pretty much work on them all at the same time. So like the metals before, blocking all the colours you want these different details to be. I used Rhinox Hide, Thondir Brown, Mumfang Brown and Abaddon Black for the boots. And again, just like before, apply a wash of Norn Oil over all the details you've just painted. And once that's dried, I'll show you how to finish the different materials on Mozrog. For the straps and saddle, we first want to paint a chunky highlight using Doom Ball Brown, and then an edge highlight using Talon Sand. And during both of these steps, you can paint some thin lines in places, creating texture, helping it to look like cracked leather. For the trousers, first paint the material folds with Gawthor Brown, then highlight the trousers using Screaming Skull. Next, layer the saddle and bag Mozrog sits on using Mournfang Brown before painting an edge highlight with Talon Sand. Now all the brown leather materials are painted, it's just the boots left to finish. Start with a chunky highlight using Dark Reaper, and then finish the boots using Dawn Stone for the sharper highlights. Next up, I want to show you how to paint Mozrog's skin, including his tattoo. It's finally time to get Mozrog's skin painted, and I also want to help you get over the worry and fear of painting his tattoo, which I'll go through step by step. But first of all, we want to paint a nice solid green base colour for his skin. I'm using Auric Flesh, and remember, multiple thin layers is always better. And once you've done painting the base colour, you want the next step to be painting the tattoo. Mozrog's tattoo is pretty complicated and detailed, but I want you to understand it's not amazingly important to get it exactly right. I would paint your own interpretation of the box image, and as long as it looks similar, it's going to look good either way. Start off by roughing in some lines. Just get an idea of the shapes and placement of where the design is going to fit. Then using the colour you painted the skin with, you can go in and neaten the design up. Just go back and forth until you're happy with the design. Once you're committed to the basic shapes, you can start adding the finer detail, 
Again, use the box image for inspiration. Now use your skin colour again to paint in the lines that break up these solid shapes into the little triangles. Take your time and again just go back and forth until you're happy with your design. Remember it doesn't have to be perfect or super neat, people are still going to be really impressed that you painted a tattoo. The next step for the skin is to paint the raised features using Ogryn Camo. This is going to help bring out the face and muscles on Mozrog. And we're going to follow that up with a wash made with Beltan Green and an equal amount of Lamy Medium, which is going to weaken the strength of the wash so it doesn't draw down the colours creating a softer shade. Continue to emphasise the definition and features some more using Beltan Green just as it is by applying this into the deeper recesses on his face and around muscles. When the Beltan Green is dry, use Ogryn Camo again, but using it in a way that builds up from the transitions of greens you already have. Now paint some highlights using Cree Khaki. I would focus more on the sharper detail rather than trying to figure out where to put them on a flatter area where they're not really needed. The skin is finished but it could look more interesting so let's work on doing that next with a glaze of Kislev Flesh. Glazes are used mainly to add different tones to an area and this is achieved with a very thin down paint making it more transparent allowing colours to still come through creating better blends and transitions on your miniatures. Use the Kizla flesh on the lower lip, ears and what you would think is scar tissue. Highlight these areas next with some screaming skull. Finish off these areas with the Karenberg Crimson Glaze which will add definition and give a bruised fleshy feel to these areas. Also if you want to you can use Athematic Blue at this stage under the eye before moving on to painting them. To paint the eyes start with some Mephiston Red, then apply a wash of Norn Oil and finish up with a small dot of Fire Dragon Bright in the centre. The fingernails can be painted simply by using Incubi Darkness and White Scar to highlight them. I'm now going to show you how to paint all the teeth and bone around the miniature, including all the ones as trophies as well as his own. Use your Shabti Bone first of all to get a solid base colour. Now use some Contrast Skeleton Hoard to create some definition. Next your Shabti Bone is used again to paint the lines on teeth and raise detail. Then finish the teeth and bone with a Screaming Skull highlight. Make sure to take your time painting, there's no rush. Enjoy the process because Mozrog is a big project. I spent a couple of weeks painting the Mozrog you see in this tutorial. Beast Snaggers have their own unique colours and markings making them stand out against the other major orc clans. But feel free to paint these details however you want to match your own orc army. If you do want to paint these details how you see them on the box, this is how I would do it including the markings on the leg armour panel. Start by painting any details you want to be the white colour of Beast Snagger armour with pallid witch flesh. And just like Mozrog's tattoo, we want to get the markings painted before all the shading and highlighting is done. Using corn red, paint in a thick diagonal line across the panel. Then using padded witch flesh, we're going to create a design that matches the box image. And again, you can be creative. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Use corn red again to paint some of the other markings around the panel. And once you're happy with that, we can work on shading and highlighting the armour. Create a thin wash first of all with some Carrick Stone and twice the amount of Lamy Medium and apply this all over the areas you painted Pallid Witch Flesh. Using Pallid Witch Flesh again, neaten up the armour making sure to leave some of that Carrick Stone still showing in areas. Highlight the armour now with some White Scar and to make it easy you can run the side of your brush along an edge to create the highlight. Finish the White Scar armour panels by painting some chips along the edges using Rhinox Hide. It's done in a very similar way to highlighting, but you want to break up the lines and try and be as random as you can with it. Now you know how to paint the white panels, let me show you how to paint some of the red ones. Start with some corn red, then paint a chunky highlight using Evil Sun Scarlet, and finish up with a highlight of Kids Left Flesh. There's really not much left to paint now, but before I go through painting the last few details, I want to go back and make a change. Looking at the box image, I think the red around the gubbins on the flesh is too much. So I'm just going to go back in with some Corex White and fix it. Remember you can always change your mind about things. It's ok to go back and redo areas if you're not happy with how they look. Now I've done that I'm happy with it. 
get Mod's rock finished there's still a few details left to paint like cables and his back banner so I'm now going to go through how to get these details finished. For the cloth Mod's rock has on his wrist start with some Avalon Sunset. Now give the cloth a wash of Cassandora Yellow and when that's dried highlight the cloth with Flash Kitch Yellow. If you want to paint any cables yellow with black stripes use some Avalon Sunset to start with. Next paint in some lines where you want the stripes to go and thicken these lines up once you're happy with how they look. Then Screaming Skull is used to paint a thin line to create the highlight. The boss pole is the last thing to finish now and to paint the horns use some scrag brown for the base colour. And once you have a solid colour apply an all over wash with Norn Oil. I'm now going to use Norn Oil again to create a gradient that gets darker towards the tips. Make sure each stage of the Norn Oil is dry first and then you want to go further up each time to create that gradient. Finish the horns using scrag brown to paint the raised detail. Once you've finished the horns, go ahead and use some wraith bone and clean up and reapply the base colour to the snake. The snake is painted a very pale yellow on the box, so to achieve the same colour, thin down some Avalon Sunset with twice the amount of Lamy Medium. You don't want to treat this like a wash though, just paint a thin layer over the snake and let it dry. And depending on your mix and how you want it to look, you can darken the yellow just by painting another layer if you want to. Once you're happy with that, use some Reichland Flesh Shade in the sunken detail and eyes. Screaming Skull is then used to highlight the snake. And to finish off Mozrog, the last thing we're going to do is to paint some chips on the snake, exactly how we did on the white armour panels. Mozrog is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the knowledge and confidence to go away and paint Mozrog yourself. Make sure to go and check out my Orc playlist where you'll find lots of other useful videos on getting your own Orcs painted. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, if you did please give the video a like and let me know in the comments. If you don't want to miss out on future tutorials make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.